Assalamu alaikum, namaskar, good morning ladies and gentlemen. You are back on the air with Muhib Hawk and welcome back to Let's Talk Education and Career. Today on our program, we will talk about how to go about and find student accommodation overseas. We're going to talk about the different types of student accommodation as well as what types of things you need to be aware of when you're looking for accommodation as well as other hints, some tips and tricks on how to identify a good affordable student accommodation. Before we begin our program today, I would like to briefly speak about the genocide of the Rohingya brothers and sisters next door to Bangladesh in Myanmar, as well as talk a little bit about the victims of the very recent flooding in Bangladesh as well. Firstly, there is an ethnic cleansing currently underway and it is absolutely horrendous. It falls on all of us to speak up against this atrocity in Myanmar, as well as help those people seeking shelter in Bangladesh, as well as other neighboring countries. I urge you that if you can donate to NGOs like the UNHCR, BRAC, as well as the Red Cross, who are on the ground right now helping the refugees, please do so. You can donate some money from their website. The authorities of Bangladesh, as well as the NGOs in Bangladesh, need help in order to help the massive influx of refugees. And additionally, at the same time, the victims of the floods. If we help each other, we can certainly help the refugees, as well as mobilize the international community to put pressure on the government in Myanmar. So, those of us who are living in the diaspora, as Bangladeshi, we should certainly put pressure on the international community. We can also help the Bangladeshi authorities cope with these tragedies. Before I start the show today, I would like to observe a minute of silence for the Rohingya victims as well as the flooding victims. Please join me for a minute of silence. Thank you. Let us begin our show now. Back to student accommodation. If you've already chosen your course and your university, uh, you've gotten your visa, if you're going to study overseas in the UK or Australia or the US, then the very next step is to think about your accommodation options. Of course, there are some of you, you will have your relatives or your uncles or a friend living overseas. And if you can, I would always recommend that you go and stay with them for a couple of weeks before finding accommodation, or if they are kind enough for you to stay with them, that is great. But there are lots of students who need to relocate to study, and they do not have anybody who is living overseas, a relative or a family member who can give them free accommodation. So I'm going to start off by talking about the different types of student accommodation. So to get you thinking here, I'm going to tell you some of the most popular accommodation options for students. They're the ones like in the United States, if you're studying as an international student, you have to stay in on campus accommodation during your semester. So those are college apartments or halls of residence and colleges. There's an option of staying at homestay, which is you stay with a local family and they provide you with a certain number of meals and you pay them rent as well. 
Then of course you can rent private properties from the locals as well as there are hostels and of course then there's the option of you staying with a friend. Now let's talk about the halls of residence and colleges and you know, the advantages and disadvantages of staying in this type of accommodation. These are usually affiliated with or owned by an institution and are located more often than not on campus or close to the university. Students usually rent a single bedroom and share facilities like bathrooms and kitchen facilities. Although some institutions may provide apartment style rooms with private bathrooms and kitchenettes, a lot of the universities do not provide that uh, type of premier service. Usually all utilities like electricity, gas and water are included in the fees and internet access is usually provided in each room although this may not be included in the cost of the room. So this is something you need to be aware of and when you're looking for accommodation you need to ask. Colleges tend to offer a range of student services such as daily meals in a formal dining room and academic tuition while residencies may offer students more independence, often giving students the ability to make their own meals in shared kitchens. Note that prices vary greatly depending on both the institution and location. So for example, if you're in a metropolitan area in comparison to a regional area, the prices will vary. The prices will also vary if you want meals included with your accommodation or you would like to make your own meals. Contact your chosen institution's accommodation service for a proper price guide and ask as many questions like what are the utilities, what are the different utili utilities you will need to pay additionally for, if they're included in, with the rent or not, and if they charge additionally for the internet as well. One advantage of staying in halls of residence and colleges is that you are constantly you have the opportunity to socialize and meet new people this is great if you have moved to a new country and feel a little out of place there are usually many extracurricular activities throughout the year everything from formal balls to weekly parties and karaoke nights and plenty of opportunities to strike up a friendship or two and meet new people the disadvantage of staying in an accommodation like this is that this type of accommodation can be expensive. All the costs will vary between institutions. Note that while some services such as internet may be included in the cost, others such as cleaning may not be. Keep an eye out for scholarships and bursaries to offer assistance with these costs if you do pick an accommodation like this. The next one I would like to speak about college apartments. College apartments provide students with a more independent style of living than university colleges or halls of residence. Apartments are generally self-contained and include a kitchen, bathroom, and small living area. Utilities may or may not be covered in the rental costs as well, and you may have to pay extra for internet and phone services. You may find that some apartments are affiliated again with the institutions while others are privately owned. Costs can again vary greatly, so I would say that you should contact your chosen provider for a price guide. Now, there is an advantage of choosing an independent college apartment. Living in college apartments not only provides a more independent living style than other forms of accommodation, but it also provides students with more privacy due to the availability of self-contained living spaces. It's also likely that you will be able to find a room in an apartment close to campus, whether walking distance or a short public trans transport trip away. And usually lots of students gather together and rent out a college apartment together. So it's a good way for you to again meet new people and build a relationship. The disadvantage of staying in a, at a college apartment is that you need to pay extra for meals because you need to cook yourself and sometimes internet access. 
you may find that the sense of community afforded by living on campus is lost if you choose to stay in an independent college apartment where you share with only one or two other students. Now, the next one I would like to talk to you about is homestay. These type of accommodation involves renting a room in a private home, sharing with the existing owners, usually a family. You will usually have your own bedroom and share most facilities. Meals may or may not be provided depending on what are the services that you asked for when you picked a homestay family. And the cost of the homestay varies greatly again. And you will need to speak to an agent, usually, who will place you in a homestay once you get there. There are certain advantages of staying with a homestay for a short period of time. For example, you don't lose the family atmosphere or, or comforts you may have been used to at home. It can be considerably cheaper than other forms of accommodation as you are usually provided with meals as well as laundry and also the local family will be able to make you get you familiar, familiarized with the surrounding and help you find your way in the new environment. Some disadvantages is that some students find it difficult to adjust to a different family's way of life such as house rules and the dinner cuisines on offer. You might also find that it is lacking in social opportunities because you are with a family. Now, we've covered three different types of accommodation. We've spoken about colleges and halls of residences. We spoke about college apartments. And then we spoke about homestay as well. Now, this brings me to my second last accommodation option, which is renting. Now, private renting will involve that you move into a shared house or flat with some friends or even strangers. You can find share houses through word of mouth, real estate websites, newspapers, or on student notice boards on campus. The cost of rental accommodation varies greatly depending on your location as well as the type of accommodation you choose, a house or apartment, for example. Visit real estate websites and the study destination section for an indication of costs in the areas you are considering. Now, from my personal experience, I find that renting uh, and staying at a share house is a lot more affordable, and it also has a lot of different advantages. So, for example, renting or staying at a share house gives you a lot more independence than other styles of accommodation. It helps you become responsible and self-sufficient through paying your own bills, sharing cleaning duties, and dealing with landlords and property managers. You have also a greater choice of where you want to live, whether these, this means setting up house in the inner city or further out in the suburbs. You also have more freedom to live as you choose, Although I find that it sometimes helps to sit down and set a few basic rules with your housemates in a share house. Some disadvantages can be if you are renting with others, be worried that it can be difficult sharing a place with people who have a different lifestyle and perhaps a different idea of what constitutes clean. <laughs> share house disputes can get ugly sometimes and you have to deal with landlords and real estate agents, which is at times can be challenging. So I, I personally find that share house is a great way to go through your student life. However, it really varies from person to person and a student's personal needs and wants. Now, this brings me to my last accommodation option, which is hostels. Now, hostel accommodation is a popular option for students who are moving from a regional area or overseas to study. They are often a great short-term option until something more permanent can be arranged. So, for example, let's say you everything for you was organized last minute, and unfortunately you ran out of time to find proper accommodation. In this case, I would re definitely recommend that you find a hostel for about two to three weeks and stay there until you find a permanent accommodation. If, if you were not able to find and on-campus accommodation or student residences or a homestay, 
just stay at a hostel. There are certain advantages of staying at a hostel that usually there are lots of hostels close to university campuses, so that's an advantage. And the only disadvantage I find is that you just need to share your house for a few weeks and the security might be lacking a little bit. Otherwise, this is a great short-term option as well. Personally, when I was moving to Australia, I did not have enough time to organize accommodation, so I did exactly that. I got a hostel, and then about two weeks later, I found a share house. And throughout my entire undergraduate degree, I stayed at a share house. So I hope those are the different types of accommodation and the information provided you found very useful. I'm going to give you four tips for choosing the right accommodation for you. So firstly, you need to think about the location. The location is extremely important. Okay. Think about where your university is, where how far you the furthest you would like to stay, as well as if you need to work or not. Take all that into consideration. Also, the facilities you will need access to and pick your accommodation. The second is, does your accommodation option suit your lifestyle? This is a very simple question, but it's important to consider how your accommodation option will fit into your lifestyle. For example, you might consider a share house or college if you love nothing more than peace, quiet, and some time to yourself. You may also have a think about specific requests you have, such as being able to walk to the train station. The third thing is, can you afford it? While your capacity to pay for accommodation will depend on your individual financial situation, you should consider whether the option you're choosing is within your budget or if it is feasible over a long period of time or not. Be very careful of choosing something at the very top end of the scale as this can make life very difficult if a large expense suddenly comes up such as major car repair or if you need to take time off from paid work to make time for exam study. So take this into consideration. And lastly, is it something you want to commit to? When choosing your accommodation, consider whether it's something that you want to commit to. Because most real estate agreements is for a time frame and you will be signing a lease which is enforced by law. This includes considering the people you choose to live with, if you've decided on share accommodation, as well as having a thorough think about the features of each property you look at, especially if you've had to make some sacrifices in the name of budgeting. So, certainly take this into consideration. Well, that brings us to the end of our show. I hope you found it useful and have enjoyed it. I look forward to sharing more tips and tricks in our next show. Salam alaikum and goodbye until next time.